Consulting Group. Uh, just wanted to spend a minute and uh, go over some things that we need to discuss, some uh, equipment, uh, things I need you to have in preparation for the uh, upcoming Level 2 pistol course. Uh, so let me just start right there. It is a Level 2. You signed up for Level 2. Uh, for those that have trained with us before, they know even in our basic classes, we're teaching which unfortunately the shooting industry calls advanced skills and they're not. It should be in every basic class. But um, when you show up, we'll do an initial shooter assessment just to make sure everybody's on the same page and, and we're clear to continue on with some uh, advanced skills, if you will, uh, which are really intermediate skills. Um, but uh, man, we need to be familiar with proper loading of the firearm, believe it or not. There's a right way to do it. Unloading reloading and there's variations in there slide lock reloads uh, speed reloads tactical reloads uh, load when I want to versus when I have to uh, we'll cover those in the class but hopefully you have a good basic knowledge of those if you don't get online start researching that go right here on our page uh, we've got a good class a good video on uh, reloads uh, uh, believe it or not how to do it efficiently to save time which means I'm surviving gunfire, and I can manage the recoil or manage the reload more efficiently and get shots back on target. So, um, need you to know that. Uh, <clears throat> we're going to quickly assess every shooter, go over my draw and presentation. Is it some, is it fundamentally sound? Uh, and then we'll make minor corrections as we go along, if needed. But uh, level two class. What you need to know is that uh, once we get past the shooter assessment drill. Uh, shooter diagnostic drill, run a couple of uh, uh, warm-ups, if you will, so we can see what you know and maybe do not know. Uh, man, we're moving on. Uh, we're going to be doing a plethora of reloads, static and moving. It's a level two class. It's going to be a tremendous amount of movement drills and how do we control and manage muzzle discipline while honoring the safety rules while moving from point A to point B. Um, we're going to be moving for speed and accuracy. We need those two things to come together. Uh, unfortunately, the shooting industry spends 90% of all of its training in a static, flat range, benign training environment. Uh, look at any officer involved shooting or civilian involved shooting. When was the last time you saw them just standing and drawing? Never. Man, we're constantly moving left, right, getting off the X, backing up, falling down, shooting on our back shooting uh, supine, shooting in the prone. There's a right way to do that, prone right, prone left. Uh, and, and then shooting around obstacles, cars, barricades, trash cans, things in the mall, whatever it may be. Uh, so that is what we're gonna be doing Aaron, during um, uh, level two pistol. Uh, some things I need you to bring. Uh, let's talk about uh, your equipment setup. You must have three magazines. Four would be great, three minimal. If you don't, don't worry, we'll, we'll, we'll adjust if necessary. But you have time. Get online and order that third magazine, three magazines. Uh, don't spend a lot of money on ammo, man. Uh, it's training. We're more uh, interested in assessing the shooter and your skills and, and weapons handling and weapons manipulation than uh, the, the uh, $700 worth of ammo that you brought. Just get a uh, full metal jacket, uh, you know, if it's, if it's 9 mil, uh, 115, 124 grain. Uh, don't spend a tremendous amount of money on the ammunition for training. Uh, three mags, ammunition, 300 rounds will be more than enough for this class, all right? Uh, you must have, I don't care what setup you run, but you must have a double mag pouch. Uh, at least two positions, three would be great uh, for you to stow away these magazines. All right? So it's critical, especially during reloads for time and efficiency, I've gotta have these magazines attached to my, excuse me, these uh, uh, magazine pouches attached to my body. Whether you do it in a belt configuration, uh, please show up with some type of quality Kydex material uh, that attaches to your belt and have a quality belt that supports what you're going to be doing. Shooting on the ground, shooting and moving, drawing efficiently and quickly. Uh, your belt is critical for that. You can run a battle belt setup if you want. Bring all your battle rattle, that's fine with us. Um, 
I will tell you though, shooter's choice, but uh, man, we need to uh, see too much in the industry, guys coming out and guys and gals, and they, they come out like they're going on full deployment, uh, full battle rattle. Uh, man, that is not the way you carry every day uh, when you go to church, go out to dinner, or go to the mall. So I would hope that you carry how you carry in training, how you carry every day on the street. Uh, but battle belts are fine. Um, you must have at least a quality double mag pouch or three singles, doesn't matter. Magazines must be on my body, okay? Holsters. <clears throat> if you're gonna run a battle belt and um, run a configuration like this, this is fine. I just need to make sure that your trigger housing is covered by your holster, period. Uh, that's non-stop right there non-starter right there so uh you've got to make sure that the weapon is secured in the holster and the trigger mechanism is covered as well um <clears throat> for you inside the waistband shooters uh or those that are seeking to get into inside the waistband uh this is an appendix holster this happens to actually be legacy holsters legacy firearms um but Man, this is probably one of the best holsters that I've, I've had. Hey, everyone's got it now where I've got this uh, 550 cord run down through here. It's two separate holsters. It's the holster and the sidecar for my magazine. All right, set up just like this. <clears throat> okay, I can carry this appendix, carry this under my garment, can't be seen. It's very discreet. One magazine in the weapon one magazine in the sidecar, third magazine in my back pocket. All right, so uh, you can run this way for the class if needed. Uh, I hope to see a lot of you show up ready to train how you carry every day on the street. Uh, this is what we need to do. Again, holster must have quality belt loops that will go under and hook on your belt. If I see your holster come out on a draw, I'm gonna come over and assess it. If it's unsafe and you don't have quality belt loops, you can't train with it, all right? We'll have to fix that. Uh, and again, your holster must cover every bit of your trigger mechanism, okay? It's gotta be covered as it goes in the holster. Appendix training is phenomenal, okay? It's how I carry every day. However, there are major safety considerations to uh, that must be applied to that. If we see that your finger is on the trigger during your initial shooter assessment and or while drawing and holstering appendix carry, uh, you may have to adjust. Okay, so we're not going to allow that to happen. We cannot have an accident on the range. So uh, belt holster, appendix holster, or hip holster, don't carry. Uh, don't mind how what what setup you use. If you're going to have a hip holster, it needs to be it must be quality Kydex material that cannot collapse. Believe it or not, this is what we continuously see is folks that want to run inside the waistband or a hip holster over here, and they're running a soft leather leather paddle holster. As soon as they draw, it it closes. So now their belt and waistline is mashing that holster inside their waistline. So what do they do? They go and hold it and they point a loaded firearm at their hand as they pull the holster out, the pants out to expand the holster and the holster. Or, believe it or not, they drive this into their body and use the tip of their muzzle. Man, if we see that, I'm sorry, paying customer, you're out. That equipment is out because we cannot have an accident on the range. Uh, folks, spend some time in your equipment research and some money. Get the right piece of equipment. $75 holster, but it's perfect. Uh, I don't have any issues with it. Uh, clothing doesn't get bound up on it. I don't have to use a, my support hand to holster. Uh, I just manipulate the garment and holster, and I'm good to go every time, okay? So we've covered holsters, magazines, uh, ammunition, various ways, uh, appendix carry, hip holster, or battle belt, shooter's choice. Please show up with some quality eye protection. It must have wraparound eye protection, all right? just like these. If you're running prescription lenses, that's fine. You're gonna to need to wear these over them. 
There will be times we're going to be shooting paper. When we start shooting steel, you must have on eye protection. Quality eye protection that protects the sides of your eyes. One from your neighbor shooting from the left to the right, and fragmentation off that uh, steel, which we're going to be shooting a lot of. But we'll be at a safe distance. But even at a safe distance, uh, sometimes that fragmentation can come back on you, and the eyes are very sensitive. Eye pro, ear pro. Get quality ear pro. Get on Amazon. You can order it, man. They're they're forty five, sixty five dollars now. Sound breaking technology. Um, one, as there's other people shooting around me, it my, my it's amplified. I can hear people speaking. I can hear the instructors speaking, uh, teammates, whatever the situation is. Um, get good quality hearing protection. All right, these are pretty expensive. You don't want to spend that amount of money on them, but uh, if you do, it's a lifetime purchase. I highly recommend it. Um. Red dot shooters, okay? Um, whether you're shooting iron sights um, or a red dot, okay? Uh, that's fine. Either or, both are welcome. However, when you show up, I need you to know what your red dot is zeroed at. I also need you to know or bring your uh, owner's manual, your operating manual, okay? Because uh, there's some, some a lot of different uh, the shoots gone on the hollow sun, like you see here, uh, different variations out there, and it'll make us a lot, make it a lot quicker for zeroing your optic if necessary. However, comma on that, prior to showing up for the class, you must get a 10 to 15 yard zero with your optic. Try to get that zero with both eyes open. Okay, uh, try to get in a uh, standard, uh, normal stance shooting configuration. Uh, so I'm not in the prone turtle necking like this, picking up my red dot and getting a zero. And then when I shoot, I stand straight up. And now I'm driving the dot down. Uh, some things that we do, my trusty old chair here, I can get in a kneeling position, lay my arms across the back of the chair. I'm standing up. I keep my neck in the same posture that I do when I'm standing and uh, get a perfect zero with your red dot. Uh, don't know if you have it laid around, we have it out at the range, a good tool is a set of crutches. Um, I can lower it and do it in the kneeling position as well. I'm still just standing, in theory, my upper body's the same as if I'm standing. Uh, and lay those forearms out on those crutches. <sighs> Relax, get a tight zero. At the 10 yard line, and we'll go over zeros and dots and, and the bullet drop and compensation and all that stuff during the class. But uh, 10 yards recommended for certainly self-defense, home defense, uh, maybe 15. Uh, I run a 15, but we do a lot of uh, more uh, long range shooting, 25, 35 yards. So uh, get the optic zero. Bring your side adjustment tool uh, because I'd rather work the line, see that everybody needs to make an adjustment on the red dot and tell you what you need to do, you go back and make your own corrections versus us trying to run the two tools I have down the entire fire line, okay? Uh, check all your equipment, your optics, make sure they're tightened down, they're good to go, your batteries are plussed up, bring back up batteries. And then for you iron side shooters, man, good on you. Um, be aware of your manufacturer sites, the type, and we're gonna quickly go over proper sight picture side alignment and side picture. Those are two different things. Uh, it's not a fundamentals based class. However, if during the class I see that we do not have the fundamentals down, we're gonna back up and we're gonna cover the fundamentals so that we can build that foundation to grow upon and then start progressing from there, okay? Uh, please bring dress appropriately for the weather. Uh, please bring fluids. Bring water, bring electrolytes. No Cokes, Dr. Peppers, and sugar. Bring electrolytes. Whatever you think you're going to consume, I need you to triple it that much. Uh, we don't take a lunch. We're not leaving the range. We've come to train, so uh, bring a snack. Bring two snacks, maybe something with some carbs in it uh, as we start depleting fluids and, and burning calories on the range. Um, and then I need you to bring a lunch. 
Don't bring a bunch of bread and mayonnaise and all that stuff because it's going to be, uh, you'll be nauseated after that. So bring uh, something healthy, nice sandwich, light on the mayo. Um, you've seen a student recently get sick on the range because of that and uh, a nice snack. We'll take a lunch on the range. It'll be a working lunch as we go through uh, mindset, uh, uh, rules to self-defense, probable cause and reasonable force. And uh, we'll get uh, a quick lunch in and man, we will get back to training. This class is going to require movement. You'll be moving and shooting. We'll be shooting under and around cars, uh, barricades, barrels. Uh, don't let that intimidate you. Uh, some folks may have an injury. Some folks could have an age consideration. Um, we will let you go as fast as you can safely go. And if you need to walk the drills, then walk it. But um, whatever is needed to get you through the course safe. So over the next couple of uh, weeks, I want you to start dry firing. I want you to get on our YouTube page and I want you to watch the videos on dry firing, drawing, presenting, and reloading. Watch those videos consistently over and over. Uh, if you train for this over the next couple of weeks and dry fire, you'll be uh, uh, set up and more prepared so we can get through this class. Uh, <clears throat> while you're on our YouTube page, please hit subscribe. Go up there and hit subscribe. Hit the alert button. So that way when we post videos in the future, you get those alerts and uh, you can stay uh, connected with us. Please, if you haven't done so already, go to our Facebook page, Instagram, hit like and follow. One, you're gonna wanna see the uh, sexy video we put together after this class. See yourself out there. Uh, two, we want you to join our Paraclete community and uh, befriend us so that we can stay connected. I'm gonna send us out an email. Any questions you have about drive by and trigger and equipment and gear and ammo, this is the forum to do it. Please hit reply all. Do not send me one message. Hit reply all because the question that you're about to ask is what somebody else needs to know um, and that'll help us out. All right, man, we're looking forward to training with you. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be a great class. It's going to take our pistol fundamental skills to the next level. Uh, get in your dry fire work. And remember, be hard to kill.